from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 8th, 2021. Sirens blared across Israel today marking Yom HaShoah. Holocaust Remembrance Day with the country coming to a standstill to remember the six million Jews murdered by the Nazis during the Holocaust. That was followed by ceremonies across the country, including at Yad Vashem, where Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu laid a memorial wreath, and at the Knesset with the annual Unto Every Person There Is a Name ceremony, where Knesset members, including Netanyahu, read aloud the names of Holocaust victims. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin took part in the March of the Living ceremony today, held virtually again this year because of the coronavirus pandemic, dedicated this year to those in the medical field who saved lives during the Holocaust and those who are fighting the pandemic today. Rivlin and other participants from around the world were filmed using 3D technology, appearing to be at the site in Poland of the former death camp, where the actual commemorative march normally takes place, and shows Rivlin virtually placing the first memorial sign on the railway between Auschwitz and Birkenau. Messages for Yom HaShoah were received from around the world, including from the European Union's mission to Israel, which tweeted, We join Israel and Jews all over the world in mourning the Jewish men, women, and children murdered by the Nazis and their helpers. And they released a statement saying, It is our collective duty to make sure that the horrors of the Holocaust are never forgotten pledging to fight Holocaust denial and all forms of anti-Semitism and hate. U.S. President Joe Biden released a statement earlier this week writing, We honor the memories of precious lives lost. Contemplate the incomprehensible wound to our humanity. Mourn for the communities broken and scattered and embrace those who survived the Holocaust. Every child and grandchild of a survivor, Biden wrote, is a testament to resilience and a living rebuke to those who sought to extinguish the future of the Jewish people and others who were targeted. Looking now at some other news, Israel has informed the International Criminal Court in The Hague that it will not be cooperating with its investigation against Israel for alleged war crimes during Operation Protective Edge. The Times of Israel reported that Netanyahu's office released a statement that they will inform the ICC that it had no authority to open an investigation against Israel. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced the resumption of U.S. assistance to the Palestinian people yesterday, which he wrote will provide important humanitarian relief and promote regional prosperity and stability while advancing American values and interests. A statement read that the U.S. is committed to advancing prosperity, security, and freedom for both Israelis and Palestinians, adding also as a means to advance towards a negotiated two-state solution. The funds for the Palestinians will go through USAID, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and through UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which has come under heavy scrutiny from Israel for several reasons, including textbooks produced for Palestinian schoolchildren, which promote anti-Israel sentiment and violence. Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Gilad Erdan, shared his great dismay at the decision to once again fund the U.N. agency. In conversations with the U.S., State Department, I have expressed my disappointment and objection to the decision to renew UNRWA's funding without first ensuring that certain reforms, including stopping the incitement and removing anti-Semitic content from its educational curriculum, are carried out. Israeli NBA basketball player Denny Avdia paid tribute to Yom HaShoah at a game last night against the Orlando Magic. Avdia, who was drafted by the Washington Wizards last year, wrote Yizkor, 
the Hebrew for will remember on his sneakers for the game, which was noted by the announcer as well as spoken about by Denny on the Wizards' Hebrew Twitter page, which caters to his many fans in Israel. So I put the word is isko. It means remember. It means remember the the six million Jews that were killed. Uh, never forget what happened. Uh, it's very important, and it's part of our culture. And um, you know, I'm 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 blessed and and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to play on an NBA court and wear those shoes with those letters. Um, basically represent the whole Jewish community in Israel over the world. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, April the 8th at 7 o'clock. It's Talmud Study. And then at 8 o'clock, more of our special programming for Yom HaShoah here on JBS with a commemoration at the Fifth Avenue Synagogue in New York City. And then at 9, Mark Golub sits down with Moshe Avital, who survived Auschwitz and Buchenwald to become one of the children of Buchenwald. That's on Lechaim. At 10.30, Cantor Deborah Kachko Gray describes the influence studying with Ellie Wiesel had on her and plays some of the songs that she sang with him. And coming up next, it's the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 8th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well. <laughs>